Tove Jansson, Moon means that and the sea, seemingly for children. But Tove Jansson was an amazing character. She was profound, she was uh, playful, uh, and she wrote a series that actually has strong philosophical underlinings. That's what I propose, but I'm not the only one who said it. So, father of the mummy is in distress because he wants to get to the bottom of things. I will translate from, uh, from Polish into English because I like Polish translation better than the English translation. Uh, so my English translation will be clearly more clumsy than the original English official translation, but I still like it to do it my way. Okay. He desperately wanted to believe that those various mysterious objects lie on the bottom of the deep lake near the seashore and wait for him. He concluded that as soon as he is able to fish them out, he will be able to understand the sea and everything will return to its place. And he will do too. And he will return to his place too, because he was displaced, because he thinks that the sea is somehow displaced. And so he is um, uh, concerned about the order of things. The sea is displaced, the, the, the objects uh, on the bottom of the deep mysterious lakes are displaced. Everything is out of kilter. At least that's the feeling he had. That's why with such determination he kept dropping the probe into the middle of the lake. He called this middle the bottomless abyss, the bottomless depth. The bottomless depth, he kept repeating this phrase in whisper, as the magical might of those words was giving him chills on his back. Welcome to the next episode of Thinking Camera. The Mummy series contains certain snippets of philosophy and therefore because they are snippets and because the series is for children Maybe not everybody takes it seriously, but very similar ideas can be found in major, major A-list philosophy players. Friedrich Nietzsche, anyone? Here we go with Beyond Good and Evil, aphorism number 146. And he says in that aphorism, he who fights with monsters should be careful lest he thereby becomes a monster. And if do gaze long into an abyss, the abyss will gaze onto you back. So, the bottomless depth at Mumin's story and the abyss in Nietzsche's aphorism could be similar could come from the same family of human concerns, anxieties about the limits, about our inability to, to really understand what's going on, right? They say, well, but Nietzsche was a madman and that was way back. Okay, here we go, Barbara Skarga. The top Polish philosopher. What is she writing at the very beginning of her book, uh, Metaphysical Trio? Very intriguing sentence. Notions, I will translate again, 
A notion transcends itself. It opens for a thought such areas that a thought doesn't have the ability to embrace and understand. So the notion allows a thought to enter the area which by its very definition, ontologically speaking, is inaccessible to a thought to be understood and grasped. Intriguing. However, a thought enters into those areas fully determined, with full understanding of their importance, and despite all critics of metaphysics. So metaphysics are um, the major fuel, the major source, the major impulse for any intellectual, some intellectual actions and, and, and human pursuits. Like the Mamins like the Nietzsche. <laughs> there is something puzzling in this relentless metaphysical thinking, which can't be destroyed and lives in the now, but at the same time is inspired by tradition. The Mamins, Barbara Skarga, Friedrich Nietzsche, all seem to be circling around the same problem. All of us, one way or another, at one point or another, have approached this concern. I tried to talk about this in uh, Light the Night, a film essay on the reception of Friedrich Nietzsche. And that's where I try to articulate uh, the character of uh, Felix Levinsky, who is uh, sometimes appearing in my projects, taking the ideas farther. Here is my explanation of his presence in this project. Dare to think, reject all dogmas, follow the light. These demands have frightened me since I was a teenager. I suspected that Nietzsche lost his mind because of the depth of his inquiries. I was almost driven insane by his call to embrace the light of Dionysus. Hence, I retreated, waiting for years to approach Nietzsche again. Okay, stop. Dobrze? Tak, jeszcze bardziej precyzyjnie. Jak Krzysztof yy, to tak, czy tak? Jak on przechodzi, to na jego przechodzeniu my przechodzimy razem z nim, dlatego że musimy widzieć ją wchodzącą do pokoju. To jest jedna sprawa. No, ja się pilnowałem każdego z bo to nie. No tak, ale inaczej nie tego. No dobra, no dobra. I on od razu mówi. Gdzie jest, gdzie jest książka Kereniego Dionizosie? I return to Nietzsche when a fictitious philosophy professor, Felix Lewinsky, appeared in my films. He too badly wanted to find truth. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm thrilled to be back in Poland and particularly excited to be able to present the award of the International Philosophical Society for Greek Studies to our Scholar of the Year, Professor Felix Lewinsky. Professor Lewinsky, congratulations. No, I don't think that I lost my mind. This project was born out of genuine curiosity how far a philosophical problem can be explored mixing fictitious characters with professional scholars who are at the top of their game. The real situations came from me hanging out with a group of international thinkers who gathered around a vision of my dad, Professor Janusz Kuczynski. What happened to that vision is a separate story. During those congresses, I only had a vague sense of where I would want to go with my personal quest. Or perhaps it would be better to say that I was arranging or recording scenes that interest me at those moments and only later, via fictitious characters, I attempted to unify them. 